uh, it's an honor to introduce our panelists, um, uh, <clears throat> Olya Sosnovskaya, Antonina Stibur, uh, Dina Zhuk, and Nikolai Spisivtsev will talk about the artistic and curatorial projects, and they will give their views on the situation in Belarus, which can be, as you said correctly, described as political and humanitarian crisis, given of unsinkable violence uh, unleashed by Lukashenko's uh, regime following the last year's mass demonstrations and protests. But in August 2020s and throughout the fall of the same year, the citizens of Belarus organized numerous uh, creative acts of resistance that triggered um, new forms of collaborative practices and social organization and this is what we are going to discuss today so the first presenter will be Ola Sosnovska who is a Minsk born uh, Vienna based curator uh, sorry artist researcher and writer uh, in her works as a visual artist and her writings she explores political and social choreographies within the post-socialist uh, contexts and beyond she is a member of artist research group Problem Collective and Work Hard, Play Hard working group. Antonina Stibur is a Belarusian curator and researcher who currently lives in Ukraine. She is a co-founder of research groups uh, Spica, foc focusing on activist art and uh, platform Agitatsia. And she is one of the authors of the book The History of Belarusian Photography. And she was a co-curator of the exhibition Everyday Art Solidarity Resistance, uh, hosted in Mistetsky Arsenal in Kiev. Um, this year. The exhibition showcased artists' responses to the um, protests um, in Belarus. And we have uh, IF, uh, which, who are collaborative projects, uh, collaboration between two members, Dina Zhuk, an artist. She's an artist and sci-fi writer, and Nikolai Spisivtsev, an artist and com computer scientist. They both based in Minsk and Moscow, also now they are outside of the cities. So the duo st stages public actions and situations, organizes online interventions, performative seminars, software and hardware hacks. I will be moderating this discussion. Uh, the presentations will be short, uh, between 10 and 12 minutes, uh, followed by uh, questions and answers. So write us your answers, uh, so, sorry, your questions, please. Um, so the first presenter is uh, Ola Sosnovska. Welcome. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you so much uh, for hosting me. And also I'm very happy to share this time with uh, dear friends and colleagues. Um, and I wanted to start with uh, sharing with you that uh, when the post elections started in Belarus in on the 9th of August 2020, I was in Vienna, uh, where I'm mostly based. Uh, and first, I tried to follow and get involved uh, into the events on the distance. And then uh, finally, I was able to go a few times to Belarus uh, throughout autumn and winter. Uh, and that period uh, felt uh, like the time accelerated and it demanded uh, immediate actions and complete uh, engagement. And of course, it was also very intense, hard and emotional. And this is also not how I normally work with art and writing. Uh, so that was also a moment of um, crisis when I doubted if art and text in general is uh, the necessary modes uh, of action, or I questioned uh, which forms in writing uh, of art and writing were necessary. Uh, so after a few months passed, uh, and the first work I finally made was a collective one, and I think it's also uh, very uh, telling. Uh, and it was uh, information boards. Uh, the uh, work uh, which I did uh, with Problem Collective, um, uh, an art collective I'm part of together with uh, Alexey Borisonok, um, uh, 
Владимир Громович, uh, well, uh, Алексей, well, sorry, I'm just trying to share the screen and it doesn't work. <laughs> so with, uh, I'm together with Владимир Громович, Олеся Житкевич and Алексей Брисенок. And uh, the work uh, explored uh, the uh, historic representation of strikes uh, juxtaposed together with contemporary strikes uh, in Belarus. And I will try, yes, now it works. Uh, so, um, uh, in 2020-21, many uh, institutions, factories, companies, uh, cult um, any cultural institutions went on strike, uh, and this was the most immediate form of uh, response uh, to the extreme state and police violence. And these strikes were also silenced uh, by the official media, the state wanted them to seem not happening. So uh, they manifested uh, themselves uh, through uh, low quality images, uh, through uh, public statements, uh, insider reports, employee dismissals, arrests, uh, chants uh, and banners. Uh, and uh, the chosen uh, visual form uh, for us uh, were the uh, information board, which is uh, a very common tool uh, at uh, schools, uh, universities and uh, factories for dissemination of the information. So this visual form came in contrast uh, with this elusive uh, opaque character of the strike. Uh, and every stand was dedicated to a specific th theme. Uh, for example, this one addressed uh, the notion of the commons and um, uh, extraction of natural resources, uh, then speculations about strikes in the right library, uh, and um, also emphasized uh, the importance of feminist strike, uh, care, uh, work of care, and its invisible uh, character. Uh, and in the autumn of 2020, uh, during the protest, I visited the National Library of Belarus. Uh, and then I asked one of the workers if they were on strike, and she replied that, oh, even if we were on strike, nobody would have probably noticed. And I think this reply is quite notable, not only in terms of the uh, that situation with striking movement of that time and also of today's moment, but it's also, I think, the statement which many of us cultural and, and precarious workers can relate. Uh, who actually wonder how strike is possible today in the current labor regimes. Uh, and in Belarus, especially uh, independent artists uh, and cultural workers are not affiliated with any state institution. So it was very hard to uh, think about the possibility of striking. Uh, whereas those who were state employed, uh, their voices were quite heard. Uh, there were public dismissals, disruptions of uh, programs, um, and uh, public statements, uh, pickets outside institutions, and so on. While uh, independent artists mostly join street actions. And uh, this is the image of one of the most uh, notable actions, which was called uh, Don't Draw Strike on the 13th of August, uh, when uh, artists gathered outside of the Palace of Arts. It's the building of uh, the Union of Artists. Uh, and then there was another action in Vitebsk uh, Art Museum. So these were uh, the two actions which I think were quite notable in the struggle of uh, independent art scene to uh, state their position and state their presence. And uh, my further reflections on the positions and relationship between language uh, and action between uh, event and the document uh, were embodied in the latest performance which was called uh, Citing Sources. Uh, and uh, it turns to various kinds of texts and movements. It is a text-based performance um, and it departs uh, from my work again in the National Library of Belarus with books uh, on socialist celebrations and uh, which are overlaps uh, with my experience of taking part in the protests in 2020-21. Uh, it also juxtaposes uh, the protest gestures, movements and effects with the setting and the framework of a research and knowledge production. I think it's also crucial to question uh, the temporality of the protest and of the event. And uh, I always stress that the protest is still ongoing. Uh, in this work, uh, which addresses movement scores and uh, archives also uh, operates in multiple temporalities. In the past of a movement trace, uh, in the future of the constantly imagined action, and in the presence, in the present of gesture of a reader. Uh, this performance is also part of my PhD project on the politicality of dance and movement in post-socialist uh, in post-socialisms, 
which among other things focuses on the uh, post-election protests in Belarus. And um, I claim that bodily, bodily engagement and collective choreographies of the protests uh, from which the march has been the most common uh, seems to be uh, the major means of struggle of claiming one's political position and acquiring political agency. Uh, because it was never safe together, it was never safe to stand still on the place, uh, people have to move all the time. Uh, they had to walk and that's why the protest was also always mobile. Uh, and in the situation of corruption of political institutes and any legal systems, uh, along with the state monopoly on media and public speech, uh, these public choreographies, collective uh, gatherings and manifestations were uh, one of the only ways to actually uh, um, claim uh, your agency and position. And these choreographies also guided political imagination, uh, because similarly uh, to the experience of being part of a big crowd, uh, of being part of the march, uh, when one can never get this bird's view, which we can see now from the drone footage, uh, and uh, it was very hard to grasp uh, what is actually happening uh, in general. Uh, one could only uh, get uh, the impression of what is happening in the very proximity to your own body. And similar to that, the understanding of the whole political movement and um, protest in general becomes very personal, uh, sensual and intuitive. And uh, um, quite soon we also learned uh, that uh, the um, great mass of people on the street does not necessarily lead, lead uh, to a um, rapid change of a political system. Uh, and I also believe that this realization helps to approach uh, the political change critically. Uh, through the course of uprising, the protest and the everyday, the body in the public space and the protesting body uh, merged. Any gathering, any mundane action could be rendered as political uh, by the police and could become polit political. Uh, it was easy to get arrested um, on the street just as a passerby, uh, and not necessarily on the day in the protest, uh, but later when the protests became more and more uh, centralized, it could be possible at any day, at any place, not necessarily on the route to the march, but also in a neighborhood. And I think uh, Dina and Nikolai will talk more about neighborhood self-organization. Uh, the ongoing political struggle in Belarus from the very start was not limited to the dynamics of continuous movement of the marches. It trespassed into daily practices and bodies with their fragility and irregular rhythms. Exhaustion is also an intrinsic, intrinsic quality of the political movement. Exhaustion, both uh, physical and political, as well as stillness, stuttering and refusal, allows us to critically address the revolutionary dynamics and temporality with its demand of rapid and abrupt political change. And uh, very fast, I will also mention the work uh, which is called the F word, which we made together with another artist from Belarus, Azeje. Uh, and it uh, tries to study the um, discourse of fascism uh, at the contemporary moment of Belarus, uh, where both the state and the protest and uh, uh, accuse each other of being fascists. Uh, and both of these positions are being criticized uh, by the Western academia as historically uh, incorrect. Uh, thus, um, we um, wonder which political affective and symbolic effects, effects are produced by these positions and the use of this word. Uh, the video is mostly made from um, um, footage which was circulating in the Telegram channels uh, shot by the protesters. And as I was uh, mostly away during the protest, I also developed quite an intense uh, body of um, um, a collection of a big collection of uh, videos and photographs from the protests. Uh, and uh, this um, fight over the discourse of the fascism brings a lot of questions uh, about how lived experience and the knowledge production are related. Uh, who owns the history, uh, which histories has uh, more weight? Uh, the, um, it questions the relationship between uh, language and action, because I believe that protesters uh, not only relate to this um, very common in Belarus uh, 
um, discourse about Second World War and partisanship, which is also overused by the state ideology and uh, which, uh, well, the Belarusian state really grounds the state ideology in this uh, history of victory over fascism. Uh, also, protesters uh, were ap appealing to the very strong word fascist because they were not able to actually um, exercise physical violence. And it's like a goodbye then. Закономерность понятия фашизм иногда ставится под вопрос ввиду крайнего разнообразия его проявлений. Thank you. Thank you, Ola, very much for what I was very interesting and uh, I'm sure that there, there will be um, comments and questions about what you just talked. Um, um, so now Antonina, um, it's your turn. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello. Oh, one minute, I start to share screen. Uh -huh. Everything is uh, OK. Yes, you can see. Yeah. OK. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for invitation. It's important for us um, to conceptualize and analyze how the protest uh, is changing and uh, it's specific. And of course, how the art sphere also involved or, for example, reacts on these events and also how the art sphere changes itself. And um, I would like to ask. Uh, I would like to ask thanks to Olya um, uh, for her important thoughts about career, uh, protest choreography, and of course about exhaustions and fragility is also very important uh, for understand uh, the protest. And I also uh, would like to talk about it and uh, thank for remembering the action. Don't paint, paint stri strike or don't draw a strike. Uh, in continuation to uh, to this action, I would like to recall another also important uh, action uh, that took took place in August uh, 2020 in Minsk. This action is uh, the art of the regime. Um, it was the second uh, action after the don't uh, don't draw or don't pay, pay, paint a strike. On August uh, 15, Belarusian cultural workers formed the chain uh, of solidarity near the Palace of Art, as uh, Olga uh, said, uh, uh, had already said, uh, that this uh, institution uh, is a so-called the Union of Artists uh, institution, but at the same time, it's one of the huge uh, exhibition space with um, a lot of borders because uh, the Union of Artists is a so-called pro-governmental and very conservative uh, uh, organization. And uh, moreover, this building housed the collection of uh, Belgazprom Bank, uh, which was arrested. And I think it's also these two facts uh, was very important about uh, the place of this action. And uh, as you can see in a uh, picture, uh, these cultural workers um, held up photos um, uh, who had been beaten by the police uh, on, uh, from uh, 9th to 12th uh, of August 2020, uh, and even one of the artists uh, undressed to show his beating or his wound uh, after the de uh, detention. And uh, this section seems to me uh, uh, really important in connection uh, with two um, significant points uh, that we find inside the protest uh, in Belarus and at the same time that on which uh, around these two points Belarusian uh, artists reflect reflected and reflect now. First of all, it's understandable of the so-called anti um, uh, ultimate uh, concreteness of our existence uh, our uh, 
phys physicality, it means that uh, we understand that we are real bo bodies and uh, as a consequence, our fragility. And Olga, uh, Olga uh, also told about it. And at the same time, um, an, an example level of violence, the real shocked forced a thousand and thousand people not only went to the street, went to the protest uh, for the first day of protest, but also uh, maybe to, uh, to reconsider uh, what our existence is and uh, there and the fact that uh, fragility and uh, that fragility comes to the fore. Uh, this is uh, what uh, the artist Marina Prushkina speaks about uh, in interview by another uh, Belarusian artist, uh, Sergei Shabohin, uh, mm, noticed, I, I just read it, people have nothing to oppose to state violence, expect their fragile, their fragile bodies, therefore, therefore they go out in hope, a sign of support and solidarity, but they find themselves torn apart, beaten, and even killed by state uh, terror. I would like to return to these thoughts a little bit later, but now I uh, would like to uh, switch to the second thesis, to the second idea uh, that uh, came through the first section, uh, the art of the regime. Uh, the second important thought is a sort of solidarity understood as a complex network of international inter interaction between people. And the idea of, of network um, of uh, network of solidarity was a central idea of our exhibition. Uh, I was one of the creator of this exhibition and Olga Kapionkina also mentioned it. Uh, we made a, a huge exhibition uh, every day, the art solidarity and resistance um, in Kyiv, in Mr. Arsenal through uh, from March uh, to, June, uh, to June 2021. And uh, this exhibition was built on the principle of network and the protest which many ex experts uh, described as decentralized, uh, horizontal, without the single leaders, um, is united through a complex uh, network of interaction and support, solidarity and care. And the exhibition inherit the idea uh, of network protest and uh, was organized through the so-called uh, uh, 10 uh, conceptual notes through which you can read the whole exhibition and uh, to understand more about protest and to find the key uh, around protest um, and um, to understand the tactics of solidarity and resistance in Belarus. After all, uh, when we speak about network as a concept, network is not a chaotic uh, structure, but it's very complex structure um, where nodes are formed uh, in connection of different lines, and it's very important for us. And um, for as an example, I can uh, yes, uh -huh. and as an example, very important example of solidarity that I would I would like to mention is the example of uh, the project uh, uh, Belarusian artist uh, Nadia Sayapin at Dollhouse. Uh, Dollhouse. And uh, this uh, very important uh, because the central part of uh, um, the idea of the Nadia Sayapina project is the, pro is the idea of sisterhood and solidarity. Um, Nadia uh, describes and tried to walk uh, with uh, her own uh, experience uh, and experience of her um, uh, cellmate uh, um, uh, because uh, she spent uh, 15 days in prison. Um, during the pro protest, and she describes uh, these uh, days not only the uh, ex not not only like experience of um, repressive or, or full of repression and, and violence. Of course, it was, but uh, above all, as an experience of sisterhood and caring, and it's very important. Uh, this should bring us back to the first thesis, as I, because I've mentioned that I returned to them uh, to understand the to the so-called to understand the, to understand the fundamental uh, fragile, fragility of our body uh, as, um, how, how to say, as the root of our existence. And um, reflection, uh, when um, 
and what's very important that many experts when they try to describe uh, the protest and when they try to find um, characteristics about projects they very often um, they very often uh, describe uh, through their um, care conception for example the researcher andre Vazianov, uh, he described uh, he um, he used the so the very interesting concept uh, protest as Care and uh, philosopher Olga Sparaga, she um, described Belarusian protest as strike as care. And the politicization of care comes uh, from recognition of fragility, uh, not as a mistake that we should uh, correct it or we should destroy it, but as fundamental state. And uh, further following through the idea of Judith Butler, um, we uh, it turns out that our body uh, to exist politically or when uh, when people when when people want to go to the street or take part in protest we uh, it's very important that the so called that infrastructure of care must be created and maintained it's very important and it seems to me that this exactly that make the belarusian protest um, global and uh, like many people uh, all over the world after um, pandemic and during pandemic um, and at the same time as well as Belarusian protester, uh, pro protesters uh, we all uh, we together feel um, such uh, feelings like or emotions like um, I don't know uh, like fragility or for example unstable instability, for example, insecurity. And as a result, uh, many people think and understand that we need to, to think about alternative political and civil structure. And I think uh, I just and uh, I would like to stop um, on this point of view because I'm totally sure that uh, my colleagues uh, EEE FFF group uh, maybe can continue on this topic uh, and uh, the topic about the political imagination and how art and how the language of art can help uh, to form or can help to uh, sketch uh, out alternative structure and uh, the so political structure or civil structure and the so-called to describe the uh, utopian horizons. I'm finished. Yeah, thank you, Antonina. Um, and now we uh, have a presentation of if e e e f f f. I I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, is it going to be Nikolai or Dina? Yeah, uh, I will start. Uh, yeah, and. Um, First of all, I want to uh, say thank you for you all, for your thoughts and uh, a lot of effort you put on these uh, important uh, things that are our common uh, dreams and common tragedy and common, common war. We are, and we are in a, in a position where we have to do this work. Yeah, and uh, now I want, um, uh, I want to share my screen. First of all, do you see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now it's fine. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. Uh, in uh, my and Dina's presentation, we'd like to talk a, a bit about uh, juxtaposing the art practices and. Uh, uh, protest activity and solidarity networks born after elections in Belarus. And uh, we want to uh, do it by an example we initiated uh, in uh, uh, autumn uh, of 2020, that is the uh, Museum of Future, we we'll call it. And uh, that is an activity uh, happened uh, in uh, several um, uh, neighborhood yards and um, um, uh, to make a bit context I, I want to talk a bit uh, about these uh, neighborhood yard activities and maybe it, I think it could be helpful for people who are not uh, familiar with uh, the specificity of uh, Belarusian protest and um, I would like to say that um, 
in many uh, activities the basement for them was uh, the structure of a socialist uh, city uh, which is uh, mostly uh, block houses based and the space between uh, these block houses after the elections uh, was the common space for people where they can meet where they can help each other where they can um, uh, invent new forms of collective action and uh, test them and um, uh, now I want to show you the slide. This is the screenshot of the um, web application called DHAT. And this is the entry point where you can find uh, the um, digital representation of uh, these neighborhood yards, or maybe um, how to say um, the interfaces where you can find your fellows and you can find uh, your solidarity networks. and. Um, uh there are many of them and they are somehow worked very well as a um, community um, solidarity network uh, during the autumn and winter of 2020 and then uh, uh, the regime decided to block it by uh, um, arresting uh, admins and uh, uh, trying to the, take uh, off the uh, whole this infrastructure of solidarity, the infrastructure of care, um, uh, and um, but uh, in back to the autumn on 2020, that works very well, and a lot of things happened and invented in these. Um, um, semi uh, in real life semi digital uh, networks and networks of activity and one of the forms born out of this uh, mix of um, uh, virtual space the space uh, that was um, um, spread among uh, chats and channels and uh, websites and uh, uh interfaces of um, um, crowdfunding programs and other uh, other interfaces of solidarity that was uh, uh, another form that was real uh in terms of i think physical one and that was um uh weekly meetings of people uh in actually in the uh, neighborhood yards and uh, you, you can see how uh, it uh, could be. Yeah, and our uh, initiative from the Museum of Future was the, uh, the part of the program of such kind of uh, weekly activity. Yeah, so in October 2020, uh, on Saturday, uh, during one of um, courtyard or neighborhood yard event uh, together with our neighbors in the neighborhood yard in which we lived uh, during that time. We made uh, something like pop-up architecture or quickly erectable structure. Uh, the idea was very simple um, and spontaneous. Basically, um, the idea was to, to like, we brought assembled and disassembled um, the thing, and it was a piece of the fence um, that was taken from the parking uh, place, and um, all the participants could take markers and basically draw. Uh, so our idea was that people um, are speaking through material, and uh, it looks like a, like a sequential political debate, but through graffiti. Uh, which was also like an effect layer. Uh, everyone was willing to draw graffiti during this time. So we fantasized about the museum as if uh, it belong belonged to us. We imagined that we are in the future and are already, already uh, talking about what happened and how we can equip or how we can uh, transform our museum in our area or house of culture or local history museum. 
And this past museum stood for several hours and then together we decided to dismantle it. So uh, in order not to leave any traces after ourselves and to be elusive. Yeah, and uh, for us, uh, that is um, that is an experiment in uh, um, thinking how the um, the position of artists or the uh, relation of the whole art scene could could be um, as I said juxtaposed to the um, solidarity actions, solidarity networks, and uh, uprising activity in Belarus. And um, now our tradis uh, or speculation is that um, during that time, during the autumn uh, of 2020, uh, there are some examples of um, um, changing the relation between uh, how art could um, be involved into the um, protest activity. And uh, the um, that time re revealed the potential of the artistic practice not being only uh, representative, some uh, thoughts or making the comments, but uh, it could be um, installed or interweaved uh, with the actual um, uh, social activity being part of it in uh, terms of um, um, playing and testing collectively some uh, social um, relations and uh, making um, um, political economical games by, uh, based on this neighborhood art of solidarity network. And the artistic practice uh, then could be understood as an um, uh, mm, invention mechanism and the invention of new uh, social um, relations, invention of new institutes uh, that can be born out of long lasting protests. And um, then uh, it's interesting to uh, talk not about aesthetics, but uh, and not about representation, but more about the politics of uh, invention and the uh, uh, open and uh, ending um, um, art forms and um, uh, the inclusion of uh, people inside of it, yeah, so inside of this artistic practice, uh, and then the art uh, form could be uh, communalized in the situation. Yeah, yeah, so basically what was important for us uh, was the anonymity uh, and also like the, we wanted to destroy the artist figure uh, who is always at the center uh, and uh, to, um, to be kind of to put our uh position kind of backwards and uh to use our um, skills artistic practices in order to um like uh to test different uh structures and uh to test political imagination uh together with everyone and so um like somehow uh during this event uh a lot of uh, technological and uh, social desires clashed together. Uh, what was important that it is like a collective production of future, which cannot be just one future. Um, and uh, it contains actually a lot of conflicts. Someone uh, paints over your inscription and you come back uh, to restore it or to talk with this pe person. So there are a lot of mismatches. Um, yeah, so basically uh, afterwards, this copy, uh, this thing was uh, copied by someone and uh, it was used in another neighborhood yard activities. And um, we see it as a nice continuation of uh, what we basically started uh, together with uh, neighbors. Um, and it kind of becomes uh, a machine of um, like social, uh, networks that can somehow grow together um, and spread 
uh, and also like this view from the future to the present was uh, helping a lot uh, in order to um, like in order to um, make the imagination wider and uh, to turn uh, to some other points of our presence that cannot be seen uh, if we are acting right now, right here. Uh, so basically um, uh, the provoking of new forms of thinking, in, like new forms of uh, community building, uh, collective um, innovation of future um, and uh, the infrastructural approach that there should be someone uh, who um, are taking care of uh, and about Estonia said, um, and also like the, maybe the last thing is uh, that um, because it's like a neighborhood yard, you cannot uh, deal, uh, with, uh, deal with it without any fun. So enjoyment was also like actively involved in uh, producing uh, the imagination and the future that we would all like to see. Um, and like transforming our ideas, our present and the ideas into someone that can be multiple choices uh, that uh, can be like quantify, uh, like, you know, as in quantum uh, mechanics, there are sev several ways that we can go uh, into and these uh, ways were present in this stolen fence. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dina and Nikolai. Um, uh, I guess now we can um, uh, have um, questions. And um, uh, so I would like to ask a question first, and then we will open up uh, to the, um, to the um, space to our audience. Um, I my first question is going to be uh, for E E E F F F uh, for Nikolai and Dina. So, what struck me in your pre uh, presentation is that you are emphasizing you are emphasizing um, um, the invention. So, you are emphasizing the uh, ways uh, that you invent or you want to invent in order to facilitate this. Um, uh, public gatherings and their uh, ability of uh, neighborhood residents to come out on the street and to engage in some kind of social uh, uh, activities, right? To be together and to care for each other and to um, not be afraid, right? So, and um, that this is very interesting because um, I just got off from the discussion, another discussion today, where, um, which was dedicated to the two uh, quite prominent well-known projects. The one is in Chicago Experimental Station, founded by artist Ben Peterman, and another one, Park Fiction, uh, which is um, in Hamburg, and uh, Christoph Schaffer was talking about that. So, and they were talking, that they are actually using the artist visibility and artist um, artistic tools in order to uh, integrate uh, themselves in the community, right? For this community-based project, while you prefer to remain um, invisible, sort of, and uh, uh, more stress and more emphasize their inventing the tools while at the same time being uh, behind the screen or behind their, um, I, I don't know, I would say cart curtain. And it's understandable, right? So because you act in the, on the condition, conditions of um, regime, right? Dictatorial uh, government regime that um, arrest people for any kind of activities, for any mov movement. Um, so, and, I mean, I couldn't help noticing this drastic difference between artists who work in the communities uh, in the democratic societies and artists who work in the societies like Belarusian, right, in this condition. But do you think that you can propose uh, this type of tactics um, to everywhere, 
I mean, beyond Belarus, beyond um, just um, uh, dictatorial regime, do, do you think that this can be a new form of artist participation in the social activism or communities? I'm sorry for the long question, but... <laughs> no, no, no. That's, uh, yeah, thank you for the question. It is super important. Um, but offer yeah, well. it's interesting to, uh, to speculate around it. And um, I would like to say that um, the thing that uh, Antonina uh, said about uh, the necessity to care after the infrastructures of care uh, and uh, it's, it's very important and important to invent um the skills yeah and to train the skills how to care after the infrastructures of cares mm -hmm. and um and i think uh they should be somehow invented tested and some of them uh, dismissed some of them uh, somehow um uh widely spread and um I think this is uh, um, the starting point for me to talk about uh, this form of um, um, not inventing the tools, but the politics of testing them, testing them together and uh, making the um, form not uh, um, making the form about the the, um, the composing different um, tools in one place and making the discussion out of this juxtaposing. Mm -hmm. So for you, so and um, for uh, to do this, uh, I think it's important to be somehow given, not, uh, not only because of the um, um, of the safety reason, but uh, in terms of the. Um, making it uh, interesting for uh, for all people who in, involved yeah but i want to save time for other questions yeah yeah i uh, yeah i just um my question was about uh and i guess that you iterated that that um so for you the end goal inventing the tools and uh for other people to use is more important than your own visibility rather than your own kind of artistic visibility right so that's that's the that would be um, yeah basically like uh the role of us uh here we kind of fly around and then uh, disappear like a, a volatile liquid or something like that <laughs> so that uh we are not the one uh who are at the center uh, but in between connect connections, because uh, the environment and uh, like uh, what is happening inside of the community is more important, obviously, than uh, like someone who is trying to introduce a practice. Because I think like everyone uh, kind of uh, inside of neighborhood yards uh, become an artist in a way that uh, he or she initiates a lot of different activities and it can be perceived uh, as political action. Right, okay. Well, thank you. <clears throat> um, yeah, and my next question is for Ola. Uh, Ola, um, uh, this, uh, uh, I think that um, the most interesting, uh, one of the most interesting um, artist response uh, to this protest were strikes that you described. Um, so the and also Antonina mentioned. Uh, so there was uh, don't artists don't paint strike or don't draw strike, and then art, the art of the regime. So there were very interesting kind of turn in in the um, uh, movement. I, I would say the movement itself because they also happened in the first days of the protest. So that it was amazing that artists actually immediately responded um to to the protests uh, but i would like my question was like maybe a little bit more theoretical but b since you are a writer also and you write a lot about um and reflect a lot about these practices so um do you think that this kind of refusal um refusal to 
to make, to produce art uh, is an effective response to this type of um, um, social kind of upheaval. Um, refusal was always used by artists in the past, right? So we know that it was like very preferable tactics in the 60s and 70s in the West again. So when artists were refusing to, to, to use the traditional forms and formats of art, right? So they refused to to exhibit their works in the museums and institutions and they were exhibiting them elsewhere. So, and um, yeah, but in, now we live now in this moment in the 21st century. So do you think that um, this refusal can be also kind of effective and um, um, uh, viable practice. Uh, also comparing it to the strikes, uh, working class, you know, wor worker strikes and factory worker strikes that were anticipated and they kind of happened, but then they kind of waited away when, right? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Um, I also wanted to add that uh, not only artists immediately responded, but everyone, like really all the groups, social groups, professional groups uh, responded and artists were among them, which is really great because some did, didn't respond, like the club scene, for example. Uh, and uh, yeah, I see refusal in a productive way, um, like, like the colonial scholar Iftak sees this, um, refusal not just, as not just a no, uh, but the way to make the way for other voices uh, be heard and to, to make visible something which is overseen. And I think I also, yeah, I think at some, uh, at certain moments, uh, refusal uh, is very uh, necessary and productive. Uh, then it can really be this uh, rupture, which is a productive rupture or like a still act. Uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, I think, uh, actually, I still believe that uh, for Belarus, the general strike, but really when everything stops, uh, is an effective tool. Uh, and uh, also all the strikes which happened uh, were not uh, like do nothing, they were very active, like people walked out, people produced something else, also like the discussion about uh, strikes uh, in IT sector, uh, is it useful or maybe it's better to actually do something else, not your normal work. So I believe in these kinds of refusal which uh, channel your activity somewhere else. Uh, where, where is sometimes actually disruption uh, and uh, total um, immobility is also productive. I think I replied, right? I would like, uh, could I add uh, just uh, two sentence? I, I would like to say that um, when, we speak, so when we speak about refusal, we should uh, s uh, understand two things. First of all, I think that uh, when I spoke with uh, artists during this period, uh, the majority of them said that they was they were so confused about it and they haven't hadn't enough distance to make art to make expressions or to see because um, and. Uh, Olga also told about it uh, that um, the uh, the language of art uh, become uh, became more mm, uh, democratic. Uh, more, it's not only professional language, but it's appeared on the street, and uh, artists don't didn't understand how to react. On the one hand, on the other hand, strike it can be mean like not to cooperate with governmental institution because of the majority of art institution uh, and the galleries in Belarus, uh, especially now is a governmental institution. And I know um, several artists who refused, uh, who refused uh, or um, canceled the exhibition uh, during this pro process because it's appropriate to, to make uh, the decorate, decorative art uh, during the violence and uh, during the protest. It's also uh, so we should understand the strike in a different uh, level. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, since uh, Antonina, since you <clears throat> added that, I would like to ask uh, questions that Sasha Rauser asked to the pan just ask the panelists here um, um, are there uh, any discussions in the artistic community about the ethics of holding exhibitions inside the country right now so we know that uh, many artists left belarus right and curators as well like you yourself so now the art community is kind of dispersed 
um, uh, in Europe and um, elsewhere. And, and I, um, uh, but at the same time, those who remain, they continue to uh, cooperate and collaborate with the state institutions, which represent the repressive uh, government apparatus, right? So, because we already heard about um, cases of censorship and um, somebody was excluded because uh, he was protesting from the exhibition. So, what what are what is the ethics of um, uh, our professionals uh, uh, of remaining there and uh, continuing their practice and continuing exhibiting there? In Belarus. Well, it's a very, very painful question for me to tell the truth because I wrote an article about it and I know that Olga also comments a lot of uh, this situation because unfortunately not the, all artists uh, stop to cooperate with governmental institution and on the one hand, on the other hand, uh, um, many artists disappo disappointed and even frustrated uh, but at the same time, uh, some artists don't mm, uh, some, some artists continue to uh, continue to cooperate with state uh, institution and it's very interesting for me because I, I can imagine situation when, uh, for example, cooperating can, can be, but uh, not like a uh, decorative uh, exhibition. And um, of course we discussed, but maybe not so, uh, not so many articles and not so many, um, I don't know, discussion we had we had uh, that we really need because we uh, the other um, i think that the um, very big problem of uh, uh, our um, uh, sphere is that uh, on the one hand that we hadn't specific uh, education in contemporary art uh, so we uh, very often artists uh, uh, continue to understand art and uh, their position as artist uh, in a modernistic point of view, it means that artist is someone who uh, flies uh, uh, above the um, time and space uh, or something like that. And the second uh, point uh, that we, many artists, unfortunately, some artists, unfortunately, uh, don't understand their work, like work, but like a privilege or like a, something uh, very metaphysical. Um, that's why we should, uh, and this, uh, this, that's, this, uh, that's why they cannot understand uh, their action as a political actions. Thank you, Antonina, and thank you everybody. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up. And um, Kevin um, sent me a message uh, so that we need to stop here and um, I, Again, um, very grateful for being invited, and uh, I thank participants uh, for giving us a very interesting uh, opportunity to have this conversation. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yes, thank well, so thank, much. Th thank all of you. Thank and you. you too, Olga. This was really just <clears throat> a, an excellent panel. And I, unfortunately, my job um, in these events is often just to be a policeman and bring things to a close, which I really don't like. I really don't want to have to do it. But unfortunately, um, I and many of others, we just, our schedules are so tight so that we only have this one hour. I feel like the conversation is really just going. going. I want to tell you all that. Um, I, um, you know, one of the questions that uh, is really on my mind this year is what can art do um, as a vehicle of protest that other forms of, of protest can't uh, do? And I, th th there's just so much that came out of today's um, session from all of you. Um, the notions about caring, the notion about um, invention and um, innovation and new forms, the relationship of all this to violence, which is a question that is really very um, uh, much on my mind as well. Um, the way in which you talk about community, um, but without um, eliminating the potential for conflict within the community, I think that all of these things are really just 
um, terrific, terrific um, parts of an answer um, to that question that I've asked. So I really appreciate this. And I do hope that this is not the end of the conversation. Um, I had some good conversations today about the future of art and protest. And um, it's looking like um, a, a dream of mine to bring uh, many of us together for a conference at some point in the future is maybe in the offing in a few years. So hope that we will have an opportunity to continue this conversation, some of us in person anyway. So once again, thank all of you uh, very much. If you are new to Art and Protest and would like to join the mailing list, um, just send an email to me, kevin.rep at yale.edu, and I'll be happy to sign you up. And uh, we have a lot of events coming up. Again, just a reminder that next week uh, we will be also in Belarus, so to speak, um, for um, the session that Marieta Bozovic is, um, is, is leading us uh, through um, with the cyber partisans. So with that, um, one last big thank you to, to all of the group and um, have a great evening.